Sister Noreen Burke. Hi, Jody. You have been in um, the D Dominican Life Center now for a year yet? Is it? It's just about a year. Just mm -hmm. about a year. Coming from Chicago. Yeah. And uh, you must have been born in the south side of Chicago because I hear that so often. <laughs> True? No, I, I was born in Detroit and I was sent to Chicago f for my first mission and I've been there for 63 years now. <laughs> it's very hard to leave it. On the south side. Yeah, on the south side, <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. So it's still within you, Chicago. Oh, definitely. You'll probably never, 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 never leave. No, that's never right. leave. Never. But Detroit, um, tell me about which, uh, well, parishes weren't as well known as they were in Chicago. No, but, I know. Yeah. Um, we were uh, from Precious Blood in Detroit on the northwest side. And the Adrian Dominicans taught there. And we all went to school there for eight years. Did the sisters have a convent at that time? Because it was yeah, a fairly a new. Beautiful convent. Mm -hmm. It was a new parish, was it not? Yeah, it was quite new. Uh -huh. And Monsignor? Monsignor Hermes, Hermes, right. I think he named the church to. I'm to, sure he did. And yeah. he uh, wanted so badly to build a beautiful church. And when it got built, I mean, it was just gorgeous, you know. He was so pleased with it. He had ideas of what it should look like. It was magnificent. It yeah. You know it closed. Yeah, yes, I know. About a year and a half ago. I feel bad about that. Yes. But he enjoyed it while he was still around. Yes. So you went eight grades. Mm -hmm. Who was the principal at that time? Sister Jane DeChantel Waldron. Oh. And was she, was this her first mission? No, she had uh, taught at um, Gross Point. Mm -hmm. And when she was 24, uh, she got a slip of paper in her <laughs> envelope that said she was going to be the superior and principal at Precious Blood. At 24? Yeah. She didn't put up a fight? <laughs> oh yeah, she did, but didn't do any good. She went to Mother Gerald, she said, do you realize how uh, young I am or what my age is? And Mother Gerald said, of course I do, but uh, I think you can do this if you were out in the world, as we used to say in those days. Um, you would probably be married and have some children, is that right? And she said, well, I hope I would be. She said, well, then put your hand in God's and you go there and you be the principal and the superior of this big house and this wonderful school, which Monsignor Hermes expects every year, at least two scholarships being given by the high schools to two students who graduate. <laughs> so she had that hanging over her head. At 24. Oh my, my. Right. So, so was she there when you were a student? Yes, oh. she taught me in first grade. She was Richard Eaton's sister, Richard Eaton's That's sister, right. wasn't uh -huh. she? So Richard she was Dean superior was her and she taught. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. Marvelous teacher. She absolutely loved teaching. And every child in every school she ever was just adored her. Well, in I fact, didn't... later on, when I was the uh, superior and principal at uh, Our Lady of Loretto in hometown and she was teaching there, I would drive up. We were living together. And so we would drive up in the car and the kids would all come from the playground. Oh, Sister Jane, hi, Sister Jane, look at this, Sister Jane, this is my homework. And here sat Noreen Burke saying, hi, kids. You're the principal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they only saw her, and it was wonderful. I thought that they loved her so much. Oh, that seemed to be throughout her life. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, which is wonderful. When, so, she, when I was the principal at um, Visitation in Elmhurst, 
and she was teaching eighth grade with two other eighth grade teachers. We had three classes, huge classes. It was the same way, whether it was first grade, eighth grade, or what, they just loved her, and she loved them. That's, you went full circle with, with mm -hmm. her then, yeah. from PB to hometown <laughs> and visitation. Right. And what high school did you attend? I went to a visitation in Detroit with our sisters again, but I didn't uh, have any friends with the nuns. I really just sort of ignored them and let them teach. <laughs> well, how did, uh, what transportation did you use to go I from? I had to uh, go on a streetcar and on a bus. But my aunt lived nearby, and so I knew how to get there. And uh, it was wonderful because it was co-ed, you know. That was and, a uh, new experience. Yeah, mm -hmm. by that time I had taught. Mm -hmm. I hadn't taught, but I had had our sisters. But it's funny, some people like to hang around the nuns, not I. <laughs> they they were good MO. teachers, they were wonderful teachers, <laughs> but I wasn't interested in them. <laughs> did, did anyone ever say to you, I think you might want to consider? Well, a couple of weeks before I graduated from high school, Sister Marie Edward Mayer said to me, have you ever thought about being a nun? And I said, no, and she said, well, maybe you should think about it. And I thought, why? What's <laughs> on your mind? I didn't say anything, though. And, uh, but I did think about it. And so a week or so later, my parents and I went to Adrian and uh, met Mother Gerald and Sister Edmund. And uh, then my did mother got it? real interested in the uniforms, they were all black, as you probably know. Black blouse, black skirt, black apron, black shoes, black Lyle stockings. <laughs> and uh, so my mother started sewing immediately. She and, was all uh, for it? <laughs> Did you get a tour of the campus when you were here? No, I, I went to the uh, Novitiate building, that was all. And there was a little, uh, not really a church, but a little chapel. place, a chapel, yeah. Where, at the end of the hall there. Yeah, yeah, that's right, at the end of the hall. and You could go in there and pray if you mm -hmm. were so happy to do that. Mm -hmm. And so my mother said, oh, I wish I could see what the postulants were finished. Mm -hmm. So Sister Edmund opened the doors, and in the little chapel was Carol Johannes <laughs> praying, naturally. Mm -hmm. She was one of the uh, better ones. <laughs> and uh, she was just lovely. She showed my mother the outfit and so forth. And we went home and we talked about it and my mother started sewing and there we were. Then, a couple of weeks later, I graduated and uh, then I uh, was going to enter the convent. <laughs> All kind of in a rush. And so my whole family came on entrance day. My brothers and my sisters-in-law and um, my mother and father and my sister. And their plan was they were all going to meet somewhere after they left here to have a picnic. <laughs> and leave you here. <laughs> yeah. So, and I got as far as Celine. And I said to my father, Dad, please turn around. I've changed my mind. Oh, my. He starts turning the car. He couldn't wait to take me back home. <laughs> my mother, on the other hand, said, no, you're going to go. I sat up nights sewing this. So you go, you give it a trial, and if you don't like it, then it's okay. So my wise woman. Then, you know, they came, and we received the veil, and there were 66 of us. And uh, I didn't really know any of them at then, at that time. And uh, it, it was just all a mixed up day. It was also Jubilee Day, so all of the nuns were over in uh, Sacred Heart Hall, or Walsh Hall, no, Sacred Heart Hall, mm -hmm. uh, for Jubilee, and then Mother Gerald was uh, in Ireland, I think, so Benedict and Marie gave us our veil. 
And then we had a little bit of time to visit with our family and then they left. And my sister-in-law said, I said, well, how was the picnic? She said, oh, there was no picnic, believe me. Your father was crying so hard that we just all had to go home, you know. Oh. Oh. We couldn't uh, make him come to the picnic, the poor man. Oh. And uh, that was very hard for me, knowing that. Yes. Because he and I were very close. Yes. Uh, the, uh, what did your brothers think of? You had two older brothers? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. They were both married. They had both gotten married when they were 20 years old. And they both married precious blood girls who had been in their classes. Wonderful, wonderful wives. Mm -hmm. And uh, the older brother had already had one child, my niece, Kathy. I think she came along on the ride, but she was only a year old. She didn't know what it was all about. And so very quickly, they each produced four children. Oh, you know, there's no such thing as a pill or anything in those days. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it was wonderful. Wonderful, one child are they, after another. Are they living now, the, your brothers? No, my brothers are both dead. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and their wives are both dead. Mm. And uh, one, of, uh, one of the nephews is dead too. Oh Everybody God. in our family dies of heart trouble. Oh your parents also? My father died <coughs> when, uh, two years after I entered. Mm -hmm. From heart? From heart. Wow. And both of my brothers died from heart disease. Mm -hmm. It was just in the family. Mm -hmm. All my father's brothers had died young from heart troubles. Have, and, you, have uh, you had the same experience with heart? Yeah, I've, I've had it. I've had a quadruple bypass. And my sister has had several heart attacks. But she and I are the only two left now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how much... Uh, uh, younger is she than you? She's seven years younger. She was born when I was in first grade because I wanted to have a baby sister. Did and you I tell said your parents? To my parents I, oh, I wish I had a baby sister. Don and Larry have each other, and you and Dad have each other, and I have no one. <laughs> so they said, uh, well, you better ask God to send you a baby sister. But they were doing everything they could to avoid a pregnancy, which they didn't tell me, of course. <laughs> and you couldn't do too much in those days either. And sure enough, when I was in first grade, God decided to listen to the little girl <laughs> and sent a baby sister to me. Oh, I bet you were happy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was thrilled. Did you take over her <laughs> care, diapers and teaching uh, her? No, mind? I'm sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> And your sister is still with you, correct? Yes. Where, where does she live, uh, Nori? She lives in New Boston, Michigan, oh, about 40 minutes from here. Mm -hmm. It's and near Monroe, isn't it? Near Monroe. Mm -hmm. And she and her husband um, come to see me every other Sunday since I've been here. What so a gift. So that's been nice because all the years I was in Chicago, they didn't come very mm -hmm. often, you know. They usually came a couple times a year, but that was all. During your life as a Dominican living in Chicago all those years, did you ever have an opportunity to travel? Well, I did, by the grace of God. <clears throat> well, first of all, the first time I was ever in a train was when we left Adrian to go to Chicago. <laughs> so that was pretty exciting. But later on, um, Mary de Monfort, had a sister who was very me mentally ill. And Mary's mother wanted to take the sister to Lourdes to beg the Blessed Mother to help her. And when the time came, um, she found she just could not handle the sister. So she said to Mary de Manfort, you know what, why don't you take the money that I've saved and go to Lourdes and um, bring a friend of yours along with you. Wow. And I was the friend, Wow! fortunately. Wow. Yes. And so we went um, to Lourdes, for sure, mm -hmm. and we went to France, and we went to um, Lisieux, 
to see the little flowers, Carmelite convent, and her home where she lived with her family. And uh, then we went to Ireland. Oh my. So it was a dream of a lifetime, oh you know. And I was so fortunate to be the friend. Amen. That, you'll never forget that. Oh, never. Yeah. Lourdes Mary was. Dee, uh, died this fall. Yes. Yeah, she was here. Were you here at that time? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm I had come. Mm -hmm. And Just I had brought all the pictures because she had dementia uh, quite severely. And um, so I brought all the pictures from that trip and some other things that we did together. And um, it broke my heart. She had no concept of it at all, you know. I said, look at us, we're at the little flower's home. No, it meant nothing. Oh. Isn't that sad? Yeah, it is sad. But anyway, she sees it now from heaven, I'm sure. Yes, and sees Lourdes from heaven, yeah, too. Yeah, that's right. Yes, that was an, a spiritual experience, wasn't mm -hmm. it, at Lourdes? Right. To see the sick. And that's right. The faith, it was wonderful. The faith of the, the faith of the people. <coughs> Besides hometown and visitation in Elmhurst, what other uh, schools were you um, associated with in Chicago? The what first place I went? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was pretty funny. There were about 10 of us that were on that train. And so the train <laughs> let us off on the south side. And... Um, there was a nun or two from each convent that was going to claim us <laughs> for their convent. And it was like, a, I'm sorry to say, I felt like it was like a slave train. <laughs> Where's the one for St. Nicholas? Oh, Where's my. the one for St. Columbanus? Where's the one for Star of the Sea? And pretty soon, Everybody had been claimed, but I didn't answer when they said, where's the one from Star of the Sea? Star of the Sea. So I wanted to go back to Adrian. <laughs> and Marie Lambert, you probably didn't know her. You're too young. Yes. One of the Lavoys. She was a toughie. And finally she said, well, where are you supposed to go? I said, to Star of the Sea. <laughs> and she said, well, why didn't you say so? She was from Star of the Sea. Oh, she to was. To pick you up. She was tough, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, it wasn't a very... Uh... <laughs> Where were you when you received your degree in history? In history? Mm -hmm. Oh, I received a, a master's in history in Chicago at DePaul University. And um, <laughs> that's a funny thing, too. It was several years after I had been teaching in Chicago. And uh, as soon as I graduated from Siena Heights, I was sent the next summer to great grad school to get a master's in uh, history. So I thought, oh good, I'll be teaching history all my life then, that's wonderful. So I got the uh, degree in uh, April or May, and I got my, um, uh, slip of paper saying where I was going, and I was going to um, visitation school in Elmhurst as the principal and the uh, uh, superior. Oh my. I thought, well, how come I'm supposed to be going to teach history? <laughs> so I never got to teach history really. <laughs> then, but there are other times you. <laughs> yeah. yeah I got a few other chances to <laughs> you, teach history, not much. Any. So and six years at visitation. Yeah, seven years, actually. Seven. Uh -huh. The pastor um, said, you can't go. I said, well, I have to go. We only can be here for six years as the principal. He said, I don't care. You cannot go until you find a nun to be the principal here. I thought, that's not my job. <laughs> well, then you can't go. That's all there is to it. I must have a nun to be the principal. So I said to the nuns that were there, what are we going to do? And uh, Jane DeShanto, who was teaching there, said, well, why don't you talk to your friend, Mary de Montfort? She could be the principal. And uh, so she called her. She called de Montfort. And de Montfort said, oh, yeah, I would like another try at being a, a superior and a principal. Uh, principal. And so 
she and Thomas Leo came to meet Monsignor Podesta, and um, he hired both of them immediately, and they accepted, and they had to wear the habit, though, even though we were not in habit anymore. And so they were there together for 40-some years, oh. and they just left, like, last year. Oh, and came to and, uh they wore a white suit and a veil. Yeah. <laughs> they took care of the school and the convent. So the pastor had the say so. Oh yeah, <laughs> it he was like a, it was strong. He was a, yeah. a, a true Italian. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, from um, from visitation, where where did you? Where go? did I go? Yes. And then I went to St. Rita's to teach. Eighth grade history oh, amen. for two years. Just two. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then I, and I had taught at um, Our Lady of Loretto when it first opened some mm -hmm. years ago. Is that in and, hometown? Yes, yeah, in mm -hmm. hometown, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, the pastor there knew me, and so he asked me if I would be the uh, principal and we were not having superiors anymore, mm -hmm. more or less. And that was after Vatican II then. Yeah, yeah. right. And so um, I went there to be the principal for 11 years. And in the meantime, I had to go to, um, well, in the meantime, when I uh, went to visitation in Elmhurst, I had to uh, go to school again at DePaul to get a degree in administration. Oh, and uh, supervision. So that you'd be so legal. So on sun Saturday mornings, um, and I was running this huge school, it was, it was just very big. And uh, that, was, that was pretty tough. But anyway, it happened. So I was certified to be a principal mm -hmm. then too. And so that's where I spent the next 11 years and so then, when I was at hometown the second time, and I was, we, we were having students who were <laughs> students from the ones I had taught the first time I was there. And I found that I was really giving uh, advice and. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like, I thought maybe I should take. Uh, course or two in counseling, you know, since I was doing it anyway. So I went back to DePaul again. Oh my. <laughs> just to take a few courses. Just to keep that routine going. <laughs> yeah. And finally the advisor, my advisor there said, you know, what are we doing here? Are you going to get a degree or what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I said, I don't know what to do. She said, well, I think you ought to work for a degree in counseling because you're doing very well and it would be much better for you. So I did work for another uh, master's degree. Oh my. And so after I received that, then I went to uh, Maria High School, an all girls high school on the south side. And I was there as a counselor for 18 years. Now that wasn't our, our, no, our sisters. No, they were sisters of St. Casimir. From they Lithuania. had a really hard time deciding if they should hire me or not. <laughs> well, I can't imagine why they would. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, they were still in the habit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you weren't. I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, the principal was very nervous about it because I think she thought the other nuns probably wouldn't like it. So I thought, well, are you going to hire me or aren't you? And so she did. And we became great friends after that. And... Uh, it was a wonderful place, and most of the girls were, they were all white girls, which was all I had taught in all the years I was there. And um, <coughs> the St. Casimir uh, girls were very wonderful, good students. Their parents made them do well, you know. Mm -hmm. and. Um, then little by little, we began to take in black girls and Hispanic girls. And before you knew it, Maria High School was a 
Uh, African American. Yeah, it was an inner city school, mm -hmm. you know, it was right in the city of Chicago. And um, I thought, well, I don't know how to deal with black girls, especially, because I had never had known anybody. Well, culture yeah. challenge. And uh, I fell in love with them. They were, they were marvelous. And they, uh, they just loved talking with me. And um, we had several other counselors, too. And so um, I always tell people I got more hugs from those black girls and I had gotten all the years I had been teaching, you know, they are just so warm mm -hmm. and so happy to be there. And it turned out to be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that a lovely funny? experience, yes. Yeah. So a, a master's in history and from what I picked up, two years teaching yeah. history. <laughs> history. <laughs> but you love history. I loved history. So if but you, if you I, had an opportunity to I never to, really got to do it the way I should have, you know. But you're an avid reader, so yeah. you, you keep up on the current history, yeah. too, don't you? I have trouble in Jeopardy now answering the history questions, which at one point I knew all that perfectly, but that was long, long ago, you know. And I think, what good did it do me? <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's wonderful to have you here on campus and to come oh. to know you. Uh, yes. I, I love your smile and your joy <laughs> and your presence to, to all of us. Well, I'm, won I'm wondering if you had an opportunity to in, uh, have a, a visit with anyone living or, or dead for about 15 minutes. Um, who, who might that be? It would be definitely Teddy Roosevelt and Giacomo Puccini, because oh. I love opera oh. and I love history. Well, what and, uh, fascinated you about Teddy Roosevelt? Oh, Teddy was a real character. Do you know him well? I don't. No. Teddy, they always say about him, at every wedding he wanted to be the bride. He had to run <laughs> the whole show. He was hilarious. And uh, I just loved him. <laughs> and then I love... Uh, Puccini's Puccini. music, La Boheme, is my favorite opera. Mm. And uh, his music just does something to me inside. It just, I'd like to t ask him how that came to him, you know, because it was so uh, magical and uh, the music was just beautiful, yeah. Do you play that in your room now? I do. Yes. yes. I, have, uh, I have La Boheme on tape and I have Madame a Butterfly on tape. And I also have <coughs> one of all his best hits on tape that I listen to all the time. Uh, well, before we leave, what, what has been your experience uh, in your move from Chicago after all those years uh, to the Dominican Life Center? It was very, very hard for me to come, mm -hmm. but I knew I wasn't well, and um, so I knew I had to come. But it's been very tough this year. And I've, I've tried to um, accept it, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I had said to God long before this happened, I mean, I knew eventually I'd be coming here, mm -hmm. as we all do. But um, um, I've, I said to God, this is an opportunity to just spend time with you, not teaching, not running around, not anything just to uh, do whatever you want. And God has made it very clear to me that he wants this um, time to be spent with him. And uh, I'm, I get a kind of afraid when I realize it because uh, i do not not sure what God is going to do. You know? mm -hmm. But um, I, I'm called to be quiet, very quiet and um, live the way I know I should live, you know. Um, and, I, and I don't have to think about anything else but only God, you know, and, uh, and that's, what it, that's what it is. It's a real contemplative life. Yeah, really, it mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And um, I've, I've called, been called to be very quiet. I have a wonderful saying hang, hanging in my room 
here that says, uh, let us be silent that we may uh, hear the whisper from God, what he has to say. And I thought, that's just what I'm doing here, being yeah. very quiet, very at peace. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's very good for me. A gift mm -hmm. for you and a gift right. for all those that's you right. love. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Noreen. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate Thank your you. words. Thank you.